How much do you think a house costs today? One million dollars! <laughs> nope. Guess again. The average house in the United States today is worth about $200,000. What if I told you that under the Louisiana Purchase, a thousand square foot house cost the government just one cent? Damn! Welcome to US History with Mr. Rowe, and today we're gonna be learning about the Louisiana Purchase. The Louisiana Purchase, one of the best land deals of all time, actually doubled the size of the country for just $15 million. So how does this go down? Well, first we have to start with why the United States wanted it in the first place. Let's go to the map. The year is 1800. Jefferson just won the presidential election and he had some problemos. Some problems. The guy, had, he had some problems. First, his country was divided, not just politically, but like literally divided. See those mountains over there? <laughs> they cut the United States in half. So, it was hard for the U.S. to send people to their western border. This made trade difficult, it made uniting the country difficult, and it made the western United States difficult to defend. And boy did they need defending! Surrounding the United States were the most powerful European nations of the time. You got Great Britain, France, and Spain. The western border of the United States was basically just the Mississippi River, the largest river in the whole country. And France not only owned access to the river through the city of New Orleans, but they owned the whole river too. This meant that they could send soldiers up and down the river at any time. If they really wanted to, they could like have a huge river party full of like tons of soldiers. And they could just like, you know, attack the United States and stuff if they really wanted to. You know, that was like kind of their thing. Stop it. So Jefferson was all like, no. So he decided to ask France if he could buy the river and New Orleans from them, but they said, Of course not, you are English type, sir. Yeah, so basically they said no. But France was about to go through some crazy stuff. France had a revolution, killed their king, killed a bunch of rich people, then decided it would be a good idea to declare war on all the kings in Europe. And then they put this guy Napoleon in charge. Hey, I had no chance but to get down. Not that Napoleon. Ah, uh, yes, Napoleon Bonaparte. One of the most brilliant yet totally overconfident generals in history. Napoleon is sent to impossibly conquer all of Europe, but get this, he actually does it. He starts to win. But Napoleon has a problem. People keep questioning his authority. Respect my authority. And he's running out of money for his war. Oh, more money, more problems. So first he declares himself emperor so he could do whatever he wants, and second, he makes a plan to get money. See, Napoleon didn't want to sell the Mississippi River to Jefferson because he needed the Louisiana Territory and a slave colony called Haiti to get his money. Here's how his plan worked. He basically wanted to use Louisiana to make food and then send that food over to the Haitian slave colony on the island of Haiti so that they could make more sugar so that he could sell that sugar in France for money so he could use that money to buy soldiers. Let's recap. Louisiana makes food for Haiti. Haiti makes sugar for France. France sells that sugar to buy soldiers and Napoleon needs those soldiers to, I don't know, like declare war on all of Europe. But there was a problem. Haiti was tired of France's So Haiti had a revolution and they won. I am the one, the way your son don't need they beat the most powerful empire and declared independence. Just like how the United States had done with Great Britain. History's pretty crazy because all it takes is one event to change everything. Now that France lost its control over its Haitian sugar colony, they didn't really need Louisiana anymore. But Napoleon was still fighting all of Europe, so he still needed that money. Oh, more money, more problems. That's right. Enter Jefferson. When Haiti declared its independence, he saw this as an opportunity. So he sent this guy named James Monroe <laughs> to go to France to buy New Orleans and the Mississippi River from Napoleon once and for all. 
But before Monroe left, Jefferson told Monroe only to spend $9 million, since that's the only amount of money that Congress let him spend. Bruh. But this time, when Monroe got to France, Napoleon said, not only am I gonna sell you the Mississippi River in New Orleans, but I'm gonna sell you all of Louisiana. What? I told you he was desperate. But here's the catch. Napoleon told Monroe that he wanted 15, 15 million dollars, not the nine million that they originally agreed upon. And Monroe said like, hold up, I need to check with Jefferson to see if he's cool with this. But Napoleon said, if you don't take this deal now, then I'm selling to somebody else. So Monroe said, okay. When Monroe got back to the United States, he told Jefferson that he just spent six million more than he was supposed to. And Jefferson was like, you did what? You he didn't ask Congress if we could do that. They're gonna be like super mad. But then Jefferson remembered that he didn't really care and did it anyway. <laughs> Senators hotly debated whether to go through with the deal or not. Some were just mad that Jefferson spent more money without asking Congress first. Others thought that this land was completely useless. And some people just didn't like that Jefferson was the one that did it. Jefferson's frenemy, Hamilton, said, quote, this purchase will probably make it seem like Jefferson is brilliant. Any man, however, who possesses any amount of intelligence will easily see that it is a result of luck. Louisiana is a wilderness. If our own citizens do eventually settle, it would weaken our country. So a lot of senators were actually really upset about this, but since most of the Senate was in the same political party as Jefferson, the Democratic Republicans, they backed Jefferson up and ratified it. And uh, that's kind of, that's kind of it there. That's how the United States got the Louisiana Purchase. What's this? Why is it significant, you ask? Oh man, you guys are super awesome critical thinkers asking the big questions. Okay, the purchase is important because one, it was dirt cheap. Two, it doubled the size of the country. And three, it changed the United States. People began to worship this idea of a frontier and this wilderness deep inside the country. This is where you get the idea of Americans wanting to explore the unknown. Engage. Of riding off into the sunset for a better tomorrow. I believe I can fly. Of asking that girl to prom. <laughs> You love me! You really love me! No, just kidding, I made that part out. But it was a big deal, and this kickstarts a movement in US politics called Manifest Destiny. The idea that the United States should buy, steal, or conquer as much land as possible in the name of God to spread democracy, and just because we want it. And there you have it. The Louisiana Purchase starts Manifest Destiny and territorial acquisitions are just gonna go down right and left and up and down and all over, all over the places. Stop it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe or don't. I mean, you have free will. I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life or anything, but make good choices.